Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to take a look at something that's going to be coming up very shortly. I'm going to be sharing with you a prototype from Null Knives that has gotten a lot of... I don't want to say hype, but I think a lot of excitement built up around it over the past few months. And finally, we're getting a chance to see what the knife looks like in the flesh. We've seen renderings, we've seen pictures, and uh, I kind of luckily fell into this uh, because uh, my friend Adam Purvis, A. Purvis Knives, uh, he is friends with Sean, who owns Null Knives, and he had this prototype of Sean's. And he was discussing it with him. Then he messaged me. And he's like, hey, do you want to check one of these out? I'm like, you know what's funny? I said, you know, several months ago when this was first being announced, I remember seeing it come across my Instagram. I got super excited because I loved the rendering that I had seen. I'm like, that's a really, really cool look. You know, but you don't know what it's going to cost or who's going to be making it or if it's going to be any good. And it was a brand that I really wasn't familiar with. He's like, I think you would dig this. Let me make sure it's cool with Sean. If it's cool with him, I'm going to send it out to you. You can play with it and see what you think of it. And I got it. It was right before I, I got the flu last week and got bronchitis on top of it. And <clears throat> I'm still kind of dealing with that. So I apologize for my raspy voice. Um, but I got it and went, holy shit, this really is really, really cool. So I wanted to sit down and make a quick video going over what the design of the Null Knives Raiden is. Because now... Uh, in two days or a day and a half by the time I finally get this uploaded on January 26th of 2022, the pre-order is going to go live on these. Now, I would have preferred to give you guys more of a heads up, let you get some time to watch the video a few times and get some close-ups of the knife and see if you really like it. But you're not going to have a hell of a lot of time. And there's already so many people that are excited about ordering this. I don't know how long the pre-order is going to last. So... I would say if you're watching the video and you really, really like this, I would do it as quickly as possible because at the price, and I'll discuss the price on the uh, tabletop portion of the review, um, at the price, I don't expect the pre-order to be open for very long. This is not a $350, $400, $450 knife. It is very inexpensive, especially for all that you're getting. And you'll have to excuse me, I'm getting winded and... I mean, I've literally been out of bed just a couple of days. I was bedridden for a week. Uh, but I really wanted to make sure I got this out at least before the pre-order dropped by at least a day. Because this is one of those knives that I think a lot of people are going to really want to get in their collection. And once they've got it, they're going to be very, very happy that they got the chance to do it. And not have to wait, watch other people get it, talk about how much they friggin' love it. See people flipping them for $100, $200 more, and then have to wait for maybe, you know, six more months to see a second generation or a second round go through. I really want to see a lot of you guys get this because of the, the excitement that I think that you're going to have when you've got it. Uh, basically, it's going to be a thin, small, not small, a thin, medium-sized, lightweight EDC knife on uh, thumb studs, no flipper. But it's on bearings, very snappy, very cool. And it's the very first design ever by Null Knives. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I'll reiterate this probably many more times in the uh, review, this is not going to be the last thing that you ever hear from him. This thing is so cool. It's not perfect. It has little, little niggles here and there that... Not enough for me to say I don't like it, but there's a couple little things I'm like, oh, I really wish... This would have been just a little bit different. Now, luckily, this is the prototype, and a lot of the little things that I immediately saw that I went, I'm not so sure about that, he has already addressed on his Instagram posts and said, oh, that's going to be changed, that's going to be changed, that's going to be changed. So the great news is, the very few things I'm going to nitpick on this, they're already going to be changed before production. So I don't want to waste a lot of time here. I want to thank Adam Purvis for uh, giving me this opportunity to get a chance to see this and play with it and uh, kind of finger banger a little bit because I really, it's, it's one of those addictive kind of knives that once you've got it in your hand, you like how it feels, you like the action, you like just sitting there flipping it open and closed over and over and over. It's going to be one of those fidgety knives that you're going to have fun with. It's very, very, very easy to carry. It's going to make a great daily companion. So I think a lot of people are going to appreciate this. 
particularly for the price point. Now, if this was a $500 knife, um, I would still like it. Um, I would be a little more critical of it. And I'd say maybe not the best bang for the buck, but in a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you what the price is. And once you clean yourself up with some moist towelettes, I think you're going to make a run over to the computer and place your order. Because for me, this is a price point driven knife that punches well above its weight. So I think a lot of you are going to be excited about it. Let me just shut up now, get down here to the tabletop review and let you guys see it close up and you can make up your own mind from there. So let's break this bad boy open and see what this is all about close up. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the finalized packaging. This is what I received as part of this uh, prototype pass around. Again, I have to reiterate, this is a prototype. There are things that will be changing from what you're seeing here. This is not the final product. And uh, as I remember the changes, I will be sure to note them. So we'll get this opened up, reach inside, get rid of that for now. Oh, yeah. Now, I just want you to soak it up just for a second. Take a look at the lines. Look at the details. And figure out for yourself if this is a design that sings to you on a personal level. One of the things that I really, really like about this I've got to kind of angle it here so you can see what it is I'm talking about because it is subtle. Take a look at the overall shape. Look at it from tip to butt. Look at the angles. Look at the areas that are cut in, that sweep up. The angles that they do so. And tell me what you see. And maybe the, the name Raiden will begin to make a little more sense. Now, I have not discussed this with Sean. It's just an observation that I've got. I very much believe that the overall shape and design of this is meant to give you a lightning bolt look. It's subtle, but it's there. It's not in your face. I've seen knife companies do this where they have a particular theme you know, maybe not a lightning bolt, but something where you're like, I can't unsee that. It's so distracting. It's so in my face that if I don't like that particular, th think of a pickle. No, not a knife shaped pickle or a pickle shaped knife. Think about if you know somebody that does not like pickles. If that pickle is anywhere on that plate, touching any part of that food, it has ruined that entire meal for them. Somebody that does not like pickles, the taste is so in your face and it, it takes over so much that it can't be ignored. You can't stop feeling it. So, sorry, you can't stop tasting it. And it's a distraction. And some things in knife design are that way too. If this went up and then went really far down, then zigzagged back, then went down and zigzagged back, it would be too much. But what I see is a very subtle lightning bolt going all the way through it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I friggin' dig that. I really, really, really like that. Now, what I want to do here is, in, in order to save a little bit of time, I don't want this to be a 20-minute long video because it's not the final product. It is a prototype. We're going to talk about some basic things about this knife, and then I'm going to give you my feelings about it in just pure... Um, positives and negatives. So if you're ready for that, let's get that going. First off, you've got about a seven and three quarter inch overall length, good size, little short, but still a good size, great for EDC. Just a hair over a three and a half inch blade. Again, very good choice, good for EDC, not gonna be 
big, giant, overwhelming, and it's not going to feel tiny for any tasks that you decide to use it for. The action is really, really good. I like the overall design. I love this. I love these haunches. Think of a, you know, a high-end sports car, the haunches as they come over the fenders and, and create the body line going down into the doors and the front fender, it gives a really great cohesive flow to the overall design. Nice beveling done here to give that accent. Very, very, very well done. I'm going to start with the negatives just to get them out of the way because I don't want people to really focus on them too much. I want you to understand what I see but I don't want you to focus on them because I'm going to tell you right now before we get into that, this is a knife that I am going to own a variation of myself, not the black. It is a very, there is a variation I'm going to own. I'm going to have it in my collection and I'm very much looking forward to owning it, to ordering it and to, uh, to carrying it. So I do want to get that out of the way right away. And if that's enough for you to base your decision after taking a quick look and hearing, Hey, it's a nice knife then you can stop the video here and go ahead and do the pre-order and, and get your ass in on it before the pre-order sells out. But if for those of you that want more of the details and hear what I have to say about it through my raspy, just recovering from bronchitis voice, let's go through it. First off, and this for me is kind of a biggie. It's this pocket clip orientation. Do not like it. As I was talking about before, the way this knife is shaped, the way that these bevels and this raised flat brings your eye to the attention of that detail, that sweep. It goes in this direction. Why does the clip go in this direction? Visually, it is... Ah, it really takes away from the overall design in my eyes. Now, there may be a functional reason because he wanted it mounted up here to the corner which looks really, really good. And he wanted the duck bill to go into the lock bar relief cut. There, there is a solid reason for that if that's what he was doing. But for me, I would have started here and I would have followed the shape of that bevel. That's me. That's just my designer's eye going into that. Functionally, functions perfectly. There isn't any sort of a real issue outside of the design flow. I've carried it in the pocket. It feels good. It clips in place. It holds right where you want it to hold. It does a phenomenal functional job. And the clip itself is made very, very well. Nicely machined. Love the way that it tapers into the body of the frame. I love that it's blind screwed. You have no exposed hardware. It was done very, 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 very well in its execution. I just wish in design it would have gone with the flow that your eye is forced into on this entire knife, this forward flow that it goes into. And then this one kind of dips down and back up that that's a biggie for me, but still not enough for me not to want to carry it in my pocket. The other thing is it doesn't really feel very substantial. Now there's a good amount of weight in the handle more so than the blade. So the internal milling that's been done here is going to be done even more. As a matter of fact, I don't think, we can quite see in here with my lighting, but there's very, very minimalistic pocketing done inside there. And I don't see any, yeah, there's a little bit in here. So we can see that. There we go. Uh, he's supposed to be going more aggressive on that to make the handle more lighter weight. And that's going to give it the better balance that I would want. So that issue is a non-issue, but it's part of my experience as feeling this type, this prototype as it comes in. The other thing is the DLC finish option is very, very slick. This thing is slippery in the hands. Now, a lot of people aren't going to mind that. I like the sheen to it. I like that black satin sheen. Again, visually, man, it looks friggin' awesome. It's just a little too slick for my personal taste. Um, and it's the same thing that I have here on my VBR. So a knife that rests in my personal collection that I paid money for, so I'm not saying it's a deal breaker, but it is something to be aware of that it is going to be slick on that black DLC surface. The versions in the Naked Raw Titanium really shouldn't have that, that issue. I wouldn't worry about that at all. So if you're like, hey, I didn't really want the black anyway. I wanted the Raw Tumbled Titanium. You're probably not going to have any issue with that whatsoever. 
Um, the other part is the very thin and uh, kind of pointy thumb studs. That's being uh, uh, changed. They're going to be uh, shorter. They're not going to protrude as far. And they're going to be fatter. And they're going to be more comfortable for your finger to engage. That's something that Sean has made mention of in his posts, in the frequently asked question posts, talking about the changes from his prototypes to the actual production knife. So again, it's a non-issue, but if you're watching the video going, those look kind of tiny and sharp, Jim. Why aren't you pointing that out? I am, but it's not going to be an issue going forward into production. Um, and let's see, the jimping, it lacks any sort of traction. They look good, and it, it has a, a very nice visual appeal, uh, but he has also said that these sections are going to be closed in tighter and they're going to be a little bit sharper. So I would expect them to be a little more functional. Right now, they are nothing but decorative. There is no traction whatsoever to that jimping. That's it. That is my entire list of nitpicks and negatives. Now, let's take a look at the weight real quick. We talked about the size. Let's get the weight out of the way. And we're looking at 3.8 ounces. Now, to give you a visual reference of knives in a similar size, uh, my Damasteel VBR is 5.3 ounces. And this is going to be a little hefty for a lot of people to consider to be an EDC. So 3.8 is a, is a really wonderful weight difference between them. Uh, my custom JK Knives Dwarf, which for some reason my finger dragged on the blade, which is very, 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 very close in overall size is four ounces. So it's very close to being what that is. And I love the weight of this knife in my hand. It feels just substantial enough for a small knife where it doesn't feel, you know, in any way uh, cheap. Now we go a little bit smaller into the Vero Engineering Mini Synapse. Again, 3.8 ounces. 2.6. This is a substantially smaller knife with, I believe, pretty, yeah, thinner blade stock too. So when we take those and look at them side by side, you see why there is such a big weight difference. But then, put it again right up next to the dwarf, and it is nearly identical in almost every dimension. And they're very, 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 very close in weight. Now, for me, I, I personally would like to see slightly thicker blade stock, slightly thicker titanium, just so it's got a little bit more heft in the hand. Now, there's a difference between how people look at their EDC knives as well. Uh, this would be like comparing, I don't know, a Sabenza to a Brian Tai. People are going to buy that Brian Tai as a good, lightweight, slim, thin EDC knife that's not really going to be used for hard use tasks. Their Sabenza, they're probably going to beat up a lot. So they want it to be a little bit tougher. Or their Hinderer, they're going to want it to be a little bit thicker and heftier and tougher. So it depends on where you fall in that spectrum. If you know there are days that you just want a much, much lighter weight knife and it doesn't have to feel substantial in your hand, you're going to love this. But it is important to note that while you can't touch it yet for a few more months, you need to understand where that weight is going to be, how it's going to feel when you get it. The only other thing that, for me, I'm not a huge fan of, again, it's not a deal breaker, uh, but it's the termination of the edge at the plunge here. That corner right there, because the blade drops down, if you're really slicing stuff, you're slicing rope, twine, paracord, anything like that, that is going to snag. Every time you go to cut, that's going to snag every single time. It's like having a sharpening notch on a knife. Some knives are okay with sharpening notches, and it's not a big deal. But a lot of people will not buy a knife with a sharpening choil because that can snag as you're cutting things. So keep that in mind as well. If you're one of those people, it's a big nitpick for you. This might be the blade design to avoid. For a lot of people, they're not going to start cutting right at the very heel, right at the very termination of the edge. So it may not be an issue for you, but it is important to bring that out. Now, let's get to the positives. I'm already, my God, 10 minutes into the tabletop version of this. As I mentioned before, the action. The detent is perfect. If this were a flipper, the detent would be just a little bit too weak. But as a manual opener, 
you want it to have a good enough tension where that blade could not possibly ever fly out, but you're not, uh, uh, you know, killing yourself trying to, you know, flick that bad boy open. This is the perfect amount of tension and it flies out fast with authority on those bearings. You've got a ceramic detent, ceramic bearings, very fast, very smooth, extraordinarily well done. And that's really a hallmark of the OEM. Now, I know that uh, Sean is not disclosing publicly anyway who's making it. I can tell you right now, I have a lot of knives that compare. I know the feeling. I know certain little things about how this was made uh, just by playing with it. I'm going to put my name out there and say that this is a Rehot product, which gives me 100% full confidence that you know you're buying the best of the best out of the Far East, period. Now, if you didn't want to spend $285 on this knife, if you want to spend uh, $485 or $515 or $525, sure, it could have been made here right in the good old USA. It probably would have blown its production date by six months to a year, would have kept getting delayed. He would have kept having to send individual parts and knives back because of QC issues, further delaying delivery, and you would have paid substantially more money. Or you could pay only $285, which for someone looking for a knife design of this level that looks this good, that has this type of um, this overall feel and quality to it, that's uh, pissing in a bucket. 285 is literally nothing. The Vero Engineering costs more than this, and it's you know it, it's one of the hottest tickets in the world right now. So for 285, I would expect there's going to be people out there that are going to own three, four, five variations of this knife because it is so affordable. I understand if you don't like to buy things that are made outside of the USA, go to Anya. That's all you. I don't care. Nobody else in the comments section cares, just like you don't care where uh, my shoes are made or my car is made or where my knives are made. You don't care where I spend my money. I don't care where you spend yours. We don't need to keep going on and on about it. If you wanted to spend 30, 40, maybe 50% more and wait a lot longer to get it, um, sure, I'm sure there could have been a USA OEM involved. But we all know the Riot reputation for quality, for quality control, for their actions, for their grinds, for their edges, for their heat treat, and they are beyond reproach. So I am wonderfully happy with that particular choice. Uh, next thing, the, the the scale design, as I mentioned, the lightning bolt influence, it's subtle, but it's noticeable. I love blades with harpoons. It's a really nice visual touch. It also feels nice when you're choked up on the blade. You've got a little bit of a thumb ramp there to sit up against. I love harpoons. You notice in a lot of the knives that I make. In my design structure, I put harpoons on a lot of my knives just because it is a visually striking little uh, addition that you can add to the knife. So it looks good. The, uh, the belt satin on here looks fantastic. Uh, Sean did announce today on his Instagram there will be one special limited edition offering that'll be in a blue titanium frame with a full hand rub satin finish. Yep, that's the one I'm going for. So finish work, action, overall design, the flow of it, the feel of it in the hand, the retro, I don't want to say retro, the futuristic look of this knife overall is what's so striking to me. That's why I photographed it the way that I did, where I backlit it so you could see that overall shape, you could see this uh, this design element right here coming through the center of the scales. It is a handsome, handsome looking knife. Um, I feel that the quality and the initial impression is slightly above the retail price. Uh, it, it definitely punches above its weight. I call it a solid three hundred and fifty dollar knife for two eighty five, and that's a good value. I'm not saying that you're going to buy this knife for $285 and swear that you've got a $500 semi-custom knife. That's bullshit. But it is definitely punching above its weight. And I really, I, that's one of the things that I love about um, the OEM that makes this. You've got a nice edge on here. Um, Sean has mentioned in his post that he's going to be going slightly thinner. Um, this is just a hair over... Uh, oh, you know what? I don't want to say because I'm, I'm forgetting exactly what he said. Um, I want to say it was 20 behind the edge and he's going to go below. Uh, or it's like 22 or something, which is kind of thick for this 
uh, blade stock. So he's going to make it a little bit more of a slicer and go a little bit thinner down behind the edge. Fantastic choice. Because again, it's not a hinderer. It's not a beefy, thick, super strong, overbuilt, hefty knife. It is a little bit more on that lightweight, more delicate feeling side. So having a thinner edge and a thinner blade profile for better slicing absolutely makes sense. So that's the target he's aiming for, and I think he's going to hit it very, very well. My One of my favorite design elements on this entire knife is the checkering right here. This means he didn't have to cut away a huge relief on the presentation side of the titanium. When you slide your finger, it doesn't matter how you engage it, even if you're fumbling and you're hitting it at weird angles, you're, the, the skin on the pad of your thumb catches in that checkering, and it's really, really nice. It's aggressive enough to catch, but it's not sharp where it's going to tear up your skin. Matches very nicely with the depression in the pivot. So that's all checkered in that depression. Looks really, really good. I love the gear backspacer. Ingenious use of the lanyard opening here because from no angle is it distracting. There are people that do not like having lanyards. They don't want lanyards on their knives. So because of that, they don't want holes in their damn knives. So you're not going to see it from the back side. You're not going to see it from the front side. It's just right there. And it's built in almost more like a design element than anything else. It's clean. It's nice. It's out of the way. But if you do use lanyards... Which, if I bought this black one, I would have to because it's so slick in the hand. I would be relying on a lanyard. It will fit on there perfectly, and it's going to drape off of the knife really, really nicely. So overall, here's my thoughts. You're paying $285 on the base version. I think it goes up like uh, another small amount for the Damasteel version. So you can get M390 either in the black wash or in the various satins, or you can get Damasteel. Damasteel was still stupidly low. It, it, the price was dumb. Very, very low. So if you want to dress it up, go for the Damasteel. If you want a daily user, get the M390. I think for what you're getting, the price is amazing. I don't like to harp on price. If you've watched me for enough years, I, I don't tend to harp on price very much more than making a mention of it, and that's it. For me, this is a price-driven product with a stunning design. It's not leagues different from every other knife out there design-wise, but it's just different enough. And honestly, most of the knives that will have this aggressive, futuristic kind of look to it that this one does um, are going to be more in the mid-tech and customs that cost substantially more. So I think it's really nicely done. He could have really overdone this, and that's one of the things that I like to point out whenever possible. The restraint of a designer to pull themselves back and not over-design. This could have gone from zero to gas station real friggin' fast. He didn't overdo it. You've got nice lines. You've got nice details. I love, again, I love that pivot. But he really, really could have overdone this to the point where it just would have been an overly distracting design. For some reason, my camera is distracted and will not focus. And it could have just been overblown and overdone. He did a fantastic job. I love the execution that Riot did. The quality is exactly what I would expect for even slightly above this price point. Even just the little little areas like, like you've got a very small chamfer, a little bevel right across the spine so that you don't have any harsh areas for your fingers to come in contact with. All the way around the frame. Feels nice. It looks angular and looks like there's a lot of sharp corners. These are all dehorned. They're all rounded off. There's nothing about this knife that's uncomfortable in the hand. Everything about it just works well. And for his very first design, the very first offering he's bringing out, I'm even more excited because that means Gen 2, Gen 3, whatever. Next model designs, next uh, things that he chooses to do as he learns through this process of the feedback from his customers and reviewers and everything else. If this is where he's starting, imagine where he's going to be in two years, in five years. What radical designs and new improvements and evolutions 
can we expect? You got a cool name, man. Sometimes the cool name sells it. The Raiden. How fucking awesome is that? The lightning bolt theme, which, you know what? Maybe he didn't even go for a lightning bolt theme. Maybe I'm putting shit together. It's just in my own head that don't really exist, but I don't care. I see it and I feel it and I friggin' love it. I, I cannot wait till, till these are released and I get mine. I really look, I want to carry this. I've been carrying this for the past couple of days in its configurable uh, prototype form. And I really, really enjoy it. So the production version, which will address many of the issues that I had with this, I can't wait. This is going to be one of those knives that's going to be a mainstay in my pocket. And God, I love that feeling. I love knowing that something this cool is coming down the line. Is it perfect? No. It's a it's a, it's a first-time outing. And I think it's going to keep getting perfected a little more and a little more and a little more with tweaks. And I'm so excited to see those as they happen. I'm going to wrap it up here because all I'm going to do is sit here and just regurgitate the same shit and gush over it. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, again, is it perfect? No. Is it damn close? Yes. Is it worth the 285? Yes. I would pay 350 for this in its current configuration and still feel like I got my money's worth. So yes, a 285, stupid deal. High quality, great action, nice feel. It's everything that a first-time folder design should be. And I'm extremely happy for Sean. I'm happy for those of you that are going to be getting yours. I know a lot of people are talking about it. They're excited about it. They've been waiting, chomping at the bit for him to open up the pre-order. January 26th, that is, da -da -da, what, two days from now? I'm having a look at my camera lens. Yeah, there is, two days from now. If I would have had my voice a week ago, I would have done this a week ago when I got it. So get in on this. Do not miss out on it. I'm going to tell you right now, it may not be my favorite knife of 2022. I think it may rank up in there pretty well, but it is absolutely a knife that you should absolutely look at for the money. I think you're going to get a shit ton of enjoyment out of it. And just flipping it and playing with it and staring at it, it's very satisfying. I'm out of here for now, guys. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, please do join my Patreon. Um, I do have a big, 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 big giveaway coming for February. It's supposed to be for January, but the knife maker that's making the custom knife that I'm giving away um, it was called out of town for two weeks away from home. So when he gets back, he's going to wrap that knife up, get it shipped out to me, and I'm going to do it as my Patreon giveaway in February. More to come, and I'll see you guys on the next video.